So clients come to me all the time and they say, look, I have this crazy back pain or I'm having heart palpitations, but I've gone and gotten MRIs, I've had the EKG, I've been scanned in every way possible, and the doctor says there's nothing wrong with me. So they ask me all the time, they say, can my brain actually create these wild physical symptoms? My name is Jim. This is Ennis. And we're Inner Solutions, a company dedicated to helping anybody suffering from anxiety, depression, or any other mental health ailment because we suffered too. Today we're going to talk about can your mind actually cause really intense physical symptoms? And of course the answer is yes. Your mind is a incredibly, incredibly powerful um, just device. I call it a device because it is the control system of your entire body. It literally has the final say of how you interpret reality. So when something is being interpreted through your five physical senses, your brain ultimately has to process all that and then feed it into your body, particularly through your nervous system. And when your nervous system is on whack, let's call it, you end up experiencing reality in a slightly distorted way. You might experience all kinds of strange symptoms, uh, in including physical pain. You might have headaches, you might have back aches, you might have all sorts of aches and pains throughout your body. You might get fevers, you might get a runny nose, you might have, uh, you name it. You name it, your body can, can create it. A quick story, one, a, lo a long time ago in college, uh, a friend of mine gave me this, this pill, and they said, hey, here, try this. And we were at a party, and we were just having fun, and I try this thing, and they all start laughing. And I'm like, what is it? And they say, you're about to feel really weird, man. You're, you're about to have some really wild experiences. And I started to freak out a little bit. I started to have all kinds of weird feelings in my body. I mean, I was really starting to experience some wild, wild symptoms. And then uh, <laughs> finally I was like, guys, please stop messing with me. What is this? What did you give me? And uh, they're all dying laughing because it was just a Tic Tac. It was just a little mint. And as soon as they told me that it's a mint, I, I could taste it like, oh, yeah, you're right. It is just a Tic Tac. <laughs> and as soon as I had that realization of, yeah, you're right. It is just a Tic Tac. All the symptoms went away. All the weird stuff I was feeling went away. And I just tell that story to emphasize your, your body can create, your mind in particular can create so many wild experiences off of nothing. Yeah. And so if you're not familiar with the placebo effect, there's a load of studies that are controlled in which they give people suffering from depression and SSRI, which is a common antidepressant, and then they do what's called the placebo. So they tell them they're giving them the SSRI, the antidepressant medication, and they find that a lot of uh, a lot of people who just are taking the the placebo, which is a, usually a sugar pill or nothing, that has has no neurochemical properties whatsoever. That there's almost an equal <laughs> equal <laughs> level of of recovery or difference in 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 their improvement. Wow! So in the same way that your mind can make a pill or something a a positive uh, interaction with your body, there could be the reverse placebo effect, which means like Ennis was going through, you can psych yourself out. Now. We also want to talk about long-term kind of psychological pain, and, and our body stores memories, especially traumatic memories, as a kind of physical signature in your nervous system, your muscle system. It could be anywhere. So here's a quick story. I had a friend who was a marathon runner, and she went through a really bad breakup, and then she started having this really chronic back pain that lasted her for years. and and and. I'm thinking about five or six years, and she had to stop running marathons. She had to stop doing anything. And she was very, very against the idea that this could be kind of psychosomatic. It could be something that she stored or a stress-induced pain. So she tried physical therapy, and she tried exercises and yoga. And on her second appointment to her therapist, where she finally gave in and went to a therapist, her back pain was gone simply from just talking about it. Now that's an extreme case with an extreme result. And I'm happy to say she's running marathons now. She's a good friend of mine. But our body and our minds are, are, are completely one and completely joined to where that any stress, any load you're carrying around will have a physical effect on you. So we always recommend that you go to doctors, you get the MRIs, you get the CAT scan to make sure that there isn't some kind of physical, uh, you know, physical growth or some kind of physical mal maladaption there. But even that maladaption that might be there, 
it's going to be there because of an emotional reason. Right. It's amazing how that can happen so fast, right? Like something that's been bothering you for days or maybe even years, you go and you start working on it at a, at a mental level and suddenly there, there it goes. And I think when you hear that, it sounds too good to be true, right? And obviously we're not saying that that happens most of the time. Usually it can take some, um, some persistence, some real long-term effort to make things like that happen. But they do happen, and it just goes to show how powerful the mind can be when it comes to creating these symptoms. Uh, so often, I have clients tell me, hey, I was reading this, uh, this illness, and I think I might have it, and as soon as I started reading the symptoms, I started feeling those symptoms. Uh, or I have clients tell me, uh, my you know, family member or my friend came in and they told me that they were recently diagnosed with something. And once they started telling me the symptoms, I started feeling those symptoms too. So sometimes even reading or hearing about symptoms is enough to trigger them in our own body. Uh, especially people who I would, I would call them hypersensitive, they might be interacting with someone who's currently going through that symptom. So let's say, let's say you're having a, an extreme headache and you start, you know, you come into the room and you tell me about your headache, you're, you're doing all the, the, the things that you're like, ah, my, yeah, my headache. Yeah, mannerisms. All the, <laughs> yeah. And you literally, I, I might start to feel that way too because of um, empathy or, or mirror neurons. I'm not exactly sure how that works. But anyways, the mind can create these symptoms and it's important to really ask yourself the question, hey, am I really, really having this symptom right now? Or is it in my head? And I know that might trigger some people hearing that, you know, it's not in my head, I, I'm not making it up. The experience may be very, very real and very painful. But when I say in your head, I don't diminish that. I just, I'm just saying it's being caused by your thoughts, your mental attitude about something. And because of that, if you want to get rid of it, you have to address it at that level. Yeah, it's just fair to say that you, you, if you're creating this symptom in your mind, even if it's not kind of in your immediate awareness, it can be there. I mean, a lot of our, <clears throat> a lot of chronic stressful situations like a job that's just full of stress or a family life that's out of control or feeling like you don't have your feet on the ground. I mean, when your body is releasing cortisol and it's breaking down your muscular system or your, or your skeletal system or anything, th th it's just absolutely inevitable that there's no doubt that's going to have an impact on your physical health. Absolutely. So, okay, let's talk now. Let's say you are somebody who has a symptom, a physical pain, or, or some kind of ache that's being caused on the mental level. Uh, I feel like the two big questions are, how do I know if this is uh, being caused at a mental level? And, you know, how can I find out? And let's say it is that what do I do about it? What do you do to get rid of that at the mental level? Uh, th that's a really complicated answer because it's, 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 there's a wide spectrum of things. What I would recommend is start to think about is this um, – so first of all, is there something empathetic going on? Like is there someone close to me that's suffering and do I have a deep emotional connection with them? That can be a level of codependency or em empathy that you just – it's just such an, a natural thing. And that may have, have started a long time ago. And how you start to work through empathy is – you really have to signal to your nervous system, hey, I don't, I don't need this. Like, I can be compassionate, I could be loving, but I don't need to absorb other people's feelings. And that works with physical symptoms, it works with emotional symptoms, it works across the board. So starting with empathy as, is there someone close to me that I was with that's having these same symptoms? Beyond that, it just gets... It gets a little convoluted, and a little complicated, but the next step I would take is think about the physical symptom and see if you can and find out when it started and what was happening around that time. Is there something that, that kind of planted the seed for this physical symptom to grow? And then moving on from that, and, and you know, if you find that there was a correlation there, um, and really do your homework, like take time, sit down, write out what was happening at the time. Was there a breakup? Did a parent die? Was there some form of stress or fear or something heavy going on in that moment? Um, the next step would be to say, is this physical symptom giving me something or enabling something for me in some way? Is this serving a purpose? Do it, is this back pain um, 
causing me to not have to do X, Y, Z? Am I using this as an excuse to, you know, avoid moving forward in my job or am I using it as an avoidance excuse? Those three are really great, like kind of the biggest landmark uh, places to start as far as tracking that physical pain backwards. That's really, that's a really great answer. I would, um, I would echo exactly what Jim is saying and just add that you can notice the pattern of when your physical symptoms are showing up and when you're really noticing those physical symptoms, notice what were you just thinking or mm. what are you currently thinking? Yes. Uh, usually there might be a pattern, you know, let's say that you were, uh, you were just reading about a certain set of symptoms and all of a sudden you started feeling them. I mean, don't you think that's kind of a coincidence, right? If those symptoms just appeared right when you were reading about them or uh, they just appeared right when you were thinking about them. So this can be uh, an, another pattern that you can notice so that you realize, okay, this symptom that I'm experiencing has nothing to do with some illness or disease or some underlying physical cause. It's most likely just my thoughts. Um, but when you, when you take that and everything that Jim just said and you put it all together, it can, it's a really, really good starting point to start asking yourself, what's really going on here? Now, of course, we recommend going to your doctor, getting all the tests that you think you need to get, right? That's good for just having peace of mind. It's good for making sure that there's nothing wrong. Um, but once you've gotten that, that seal of approval, that, that response from your doctor, and they say, everything's looking great to me. It's probably just anxiety. It's probably just you know a mental thing. Then you can start to really implement this stuff very seriously. And there's no need to keep going back getting tests done every single week because you just can't believe the results. Um, but it's a sign that, okay, this, I got to come at this from a different angle and, and really see what's going on. And I would push it even further to say, even if your doctor does find something that's going on, I would, I would still apply these techniques because the, the emotional, like, like the, the withholding stress or the being in a highly anxious state, it's going to manifest into your body. So even though you can find, oh, there's a cause, it might be, you know, X, Y, Z, whatever it is, I would still do a complete audit of what is X, Y, Z giving me or, or, or use the techniques we talked about. Now, just to address people or those of you out there who thinks this is kind of gibberish or it may not may not mean anything or it's kind of like hullabaloo it's it, hullabaloo it's 1975 <laughs> we're talking here um i would just ask you why why wh what does that give you to believe that what 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 and, and and listen to me like i grew up in a family full of scientists and this is not a kind of con common correlation until you talk to you know more advanced doctors or more modern doctors or more advanced counselors but it's very, very real. I've seen enough of a sample size now to be sold on it. I've seen phys you know, physical ailments and, and, and manifestations in myself as well as clients. And just think that maybe some of that closed offness, if you're suffering from pain, is part of what's causing that pain to you. And I'm not trying to sell you on this. I'm trying to sell you on the fact that there's no benefit to being closed off to this whatsoever. Yeah, all too often. Likewise, many, many clients I've talked to have had this exact experience. And it's very frustrating for a family member who they're going through something and you think that they're just making it up or something and that it's all in their head. That doesn't really do anything to fix the problem. That often just makes it worse. And so if someone in your family is going through a physical symptom and and you can't really figure out why um, there's there's very logical and yet very compassionate ways to to go about helping them and none of it involves just denying what they're going through none of it involves just um, writing it off as as nonsense so keep an open mind and keep an open heart when you're dealing with this stuff both with yourself and with other people. And you'll find that, you know, miracles do happen. And I use that word um, kind of jokingly, but when you are having this intense pain and it goes away because of uh, a letting go of a thought, it can seem like a miracle. It can seem like, oh wow, that so much pain has just been dissolved with uh, something that I, I wouldn't have thought was a key component.
Absolutely. And so when we talk about this, we're not saying emotions are the only factor, but we're saying they're a significant factor and one that get overlooked too often. Your genetics are going to be a factor. Your environment's going to be a factor. So keep all this into consideration when moving forward with everything. So guys, if you like the content here, please like and subscribe to our channel. Again, we are two guys who suffered for a long time from panic attacks, high anxiety, depression. So our goal is really to provide resources for people that uh, can really help them, the resources we wish we had. And just remember that no matter where you are, no matter how long you've, you've been there, no matter how intense or how stuck you feel, you're never stuck. You might just need some help. For NSM Jim, thank you guys.